Oh, that's too well. This little video started from a uh, chance listening to a conversation in Sobey Stores with Lenny Cayley a few years ago. And he was talking to a customer about the Sobey Giant, namely Arthur Cayley. And when I came up to get served, I'd been asking him about it and he was telling me where he lived for a few years. Hi Carla! Carla, as you can see, is with me again for another venture. And if you listen to all the rumours of Arthur K, he lived in dozens of places. He lived in the Ginger Pub, uh, Sobey Hotel Pub. Well, that's a lie because it wasn't built when he left the Alaman, so it's not that. Lived up Solby, Jerby, Andreas. Lived anywhere really. And I suppose it's because he was famous. Go on, Pen. Penny, go. Call Penny over, Carla. So, as the conversation went on, he did say that he's heard he lived in Philip Davies Croft. When I asked him where it was, he said it was just on the Sobe River below Killebrega. And for those who know Killebrega, that's at the top of the hill. This hill here. Up this way. Yeah, so that's Killebrega at the top of there. So I looked around in the village, or looked around from the river to see if I could see where it were. And we did find it. And it's up here. And it's called, it is called Philip Davies Croft. It's about eight acres in total. Was the site where they lived here or not? Who would know? So I took Carl into coming down with me. So I thought I'd come down when the bluebells are out and they're out today, as you can see. Like as you know, the Sylvie Giants, some of his dimensions were what? I can't remember. Uh, 7 foot 11. But there was like 13 children in this house apparently. 13? Yeah. Standing room only then? That's yeah. so what it says that we have 13 in here. It's amazing. But again, we're not sure where they lived here, as I said. He's lived in no. lots of places. But from the description I got, this is the only place across the river that was close to Calabrega. So, not a lot to see, Carla. Bluebells are good, though. That's a good idea. Lovely, aren't they? There is ash tree as well, you see it? It's standing under the ash tree. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. What's the ash tree do? Oh, don't know. <laughs> Wards off evil spirits. That's what they did. And the old folks, they're very superstitious. You must add some washing because there's your pecker tree down the bottom. There was one there, and there's one just there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. 
It is, you used to say, difficult to believe. Eleven. Never mind, just one person could live in it. Mm. And that guy was seven foot eleven, you said. Seven eleven. Mm. Weighed twenty eight stone, yeah. but there's a, a different that with twenty five to well, twenty eight. You, you may put some weight on over the years. Well, yeah. Still not fat, not heavy for a man that height, is it? I mean, there's some people five foot, twenty eight stone. Well, I wouldn't like him to fall on me. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can bet that. This, uh, no type A? Um, I guess there would have been. Or well, wouldn't they just go and pee in the river? Yeah. Maybe it was before type A, because when was he born? Oh, 1884? No. No. 1829? And uh, he left the Alaman when he was 27. No, he was born 1824 because he left in 1851. So, <coughs> we took a bit of history up about him, and Carlo's gonna video me spouting off about his life. Carl's big passion in life is toilets. <laughs> so whenever we go looking for these things, we've got to find a thigh egg. So she's convinced that this could be a thigh egg. Actually, I don't know, you know, it could have been another building because there's a gap here. But yeah. there's a pile of, um, with my stone eye, there's a pile of stuff over there. Woo. So we've got more to see, have we, Carla? Yeah. I reckon this is just another outbuilding, you know. Well, we don't know, do we? I'm sure it would be correct. Half the fun is guessing, isn't it? Yeah. I've known on about finding the well, but there's a river right there. They wouldn't bother, would they? <laughs> be looking all day. So there's le there has been other ruins in front of this and beside it. And as I said, you always get the thorn trees and the mountain ash, so definitely was inhabited a long time ago. Such a pretty spot with the bluebells, isn't it? Can you smell them? No, I can't. Good, isn't it? I've done something right, folks. It won't last, don't get excited. So what do you think about this place then, Carla? I'd, actually, I'd live here. I would. Do you know what, this one and, uh, what's that one, the Hidden Valley one that you... Oh yeah, Glenn. up at the Balaf. Glen Doom. Yeah, yeah. That one's gorgeous. But likes of here when you when the old days, old days. Don't say it. My youth. Oh yeah, 1700s. Yeah, they would have had uh, wood for, for firewood. They would have collected gorse and bracken to burn. Mm. They would have water all the time. Whether they would have flooded, I don't know. More bricks there. Yeah. I'd love to know what it looked like in the day. Yeah, unfortunately the only thing you could do was have some with a pink. Do you not have any pictures of it like donkey's years ago? No. It would have looked like that for a long, long time. Basically. So we throw that. Ooh, Roxy! I think. So he couldn't have been ever in a Subway Hotel because that was his built. And he went to Manchester and London and then off to Paris. Got paid for what he did. And uh, in Paris his mother got a letter from him which contained the fact that he 
died when they looked into it because of insurance fraud. So they didn't bury him, they buried a big log. And uh, a lot of years later he turned up in America working for P.T. Barnum Circus. And uh, there, more or less, where he stayed with strange names like uh, Bernard Gosling, Gosling and stuff like this, Arabian Nights and so forth. And uh, he stayed there in America for the rest of his life. Married three times, divorced twice. One of his wives went off with a man, a horse, and his goat. And when he was asked about what he missed the boat, he said it was the goat. <laughs> and, um, Typical man. <laughs> <laughs> when he um, finally settled down in his old age, he died, I think it was, in, I think it was 1889 in a place called Middlebush in America and he's in an unmanned grave or unmarked grave as you say and um, when he died he left a will of $10,000 so he's done all right for himself that today we were three hundred grand or three hundred thousand dollars so it was okay and no word from ever come back to the Alamand never happened so that's the life history of the Sobe Giant we also got a couple of pictures of his hands and the size of them when he was nabby, um, so I'll stick to with the little video. But again folks, I can't guarantee that he ever lived here. It's a rumour. The people will know about this as well. The end! Yay! What do you reckon? That was good. Nice and short. <laughs>